right, we are finally putting this thing back together. And it has been torn apart. There's been all kinds of stuff going on. Um, and I just haven't had time to get this thing back together. Uh, it's been apart over a month. Um, took about a week and a half for to get the injectors back, or from the time I shipped them to get them back. It was just over a week, I guess. But all other kind of life stuff got in the way. So I'm finally getting back to putting this thing back together. So in the last clips, y'all saw adjust to the valves, all that kind of stuff. They were a little bit out of adjustment, but not too bad. Um, definitely needed adjust, or definitely, they were out of spec, but not enough to probably affect the way it runs, but they are now to spec. So uh, we should be good for about another 10,000 miles. Um, so now I've got the valve cover back on it because I just adjusted the valves. And uh, you saw where I, if you watched the other videos, I adjusted the valves and I checked the uh, timing chain tension. Now we are putting the injectors back in. And so what I'm gonna do, um, if you, I, I sent these off to have them rebuilt. They've got, I bought brand new nozzles for them. These are uh, Farad nozzles. Uh, the nozzles will be the expensive part of this if you determine if you decide to buy new nozzles. Uh, I paid a hundred dollars uh, minus or plus the cost of me shipping them to the guy. Uh, I just opted to do that then do them for myself. I would add money into a pop tester and all that kind of stuff and like I said with all the stuff I had going on I haven't had time to work on this much less rebuild injectors. So. We're gonna go ahead and pop these in. If you do not buy new nozzles and you go with, you know, trying to do some used nozzles, make sure to buy some new heat shields. Uh, They're cheap and you definitely do not want to reuse heat shields. That's pretty much your injector seal to the uh, pre-combustion chamber. And so we've got to get the old ones out. I've got, you know, of course I left this with them paper down in each hole make sure nothing got down in there but now we need to pull these out and so we're going to use a little pick and i'm going to show y'all up close i guess on this first one i guess i'll try to do it one-handed and uh i'm going to take a little pick and i've cleaned this thing off And there is the heat shield out. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna take some brake clean. And I'm not gonna spray brake clean down in there, but I'm gonna spray brake clean on a paper towel. I'm gonna take wrap a screwdriver around it and kind of clean up in there. So I'm gonna put y'all on the stand for this. And we may go through a couple of them. We'll see, I might do time lapse. After we do a couple of them, we'll just see how it goes. Uh, we don't need a two hour long video. I don't know how long this process will take. So, and then we're gonna do these one at a time. So we're gonna clean one, put the new injector in, torque it down, and then um, go to the next one. And when you put these in, make sure you put them in facing the right way, which will be that side up what that does is the injector pushes down on this middle part and kind of see it makes a seal so if you can see on this one that portion is crushed down flat so let's uh we're gonna take probably half a paper towel. I don't think I can get a whole one down in there. And fold this up and kind of do it like this. Spray it with bright clean. Clean paper towel. My gloves just have oil on them from doing the valve cover. Put 
screwdriver's a little on the small side. Now we're not wanting to bound up. Turned a few times and bound up. That's looking decent. So we'll take another one. And see, that's the pre combustion chamber. You can see the tip of the glow plug in there. Um, we just need to make sure we get that kind of clean. But I don't want to be spraying brake clean directly down in there because I don't want to end up with brake clean in the cylinders. It may be fine, but it's just not something I want to do. So we'll clean it like this. I'm kind of pushing it up against the outside edge to put pressure up against the walls of it. it Look to be the dirtiest part of it. And then we're going to flip and go the opposite way on some clean, or opposite side, on some clean paper towel. And take that out. And that's the junk that was down in there. And if I look, that looks pretty good. I'm going to take this pick gonna run on here on the outside edge and that's just collecting on that just a little bit that's collecting on the um, top of that pre-combustion the still where that seal sits it's not falling down in there and we're gonna wipe it one more time big screwdriver seems to work the best and the top of my brake clean just broke off that's gonna make things fun. I think I got another can. Okay, and when you put this back together, make sure you put that heat shield in the right spot, or in the right position. Don't put it in upside down. spot where I see something. Let's see if I can still spray this thing. Let's right, grab another can. It's leaking a bunch but it's still spraying. take and do one dry no brake clean it's looking a little wet that one had quite a bit of brake clean on it that nozzle not spraying right up 
this one around. Yeah, I think what we'll do is after we get this one torqued in there, I think we're gonna put the time lapse on. I don't know about y'all, but I think this would get a little bit boring. Watching the same thing five times. So, got that one in, or got that one clean. Let's drop in a heat shield. These came with my nozzles, but you can buy them separately if you're gonna use some good used nozzles. And just make sure you get it sitting in there completely flat. So I've got this one. It is in there, and we're going to take one of our new injectors, not new, one of our rebuilt injectors with a new nozzle. Look how pretty these things are. Look at that, a nice new rod nozzles. So, take it, start it in here. Now these are the injectors off my parts car because my other ones were rusty and one of the return lines broke off. One of the return line nipples broke off. So these get torqued to like, it's about 52 foot pounds. I expect it in Newton meters, but I'm going to do foot pounds because I don't have a newton meter. So that's 52 right there. And I'm going to take one of these, the inside of one of these paper towels and just place it over that. Inside's clean. So, and that'll just cover up the injector, make sure nothing falls into the return line, make sure nothing return falls into the input side of it. So, I'm gonna go through this. Here we go, we got 10 minutes of just doing one injector. So, I'm going to uh, put it on time lapse. See y'all when I'm done. Injectors are in. Uh, now we just need to put the injector lines in and the return lines. Um, if you want to know why I didn't remove, why you didn't see me remove the heat shields for two, three, and four, I had pulled those out previously. Um, they came out real easy. One in when I was pulling them out previously, I stuck a screwdriver in there and just fished them out on two, three, and four, um, and then one and five were kind of stuck, so I just left those, and uh, so that's the only two I had to pull out. Uh, I had done the, the middle three when I did the compression test. So I pulled them out after I did the compression test. Anyway, uh, we're gonna go ahead and hook the uh, lines up. We've got I'm gonna go get my return line stuff and we'll start looking at how we need to route that. Um, and I'm gonna, before I get the, the 
metal lines in here. I'm gonna kind of look at, see how I wanna do the return lines and make that easy on myself. So, um, cause I, I, don't, I don't know if I'm gonna need to put a little clamp on it. Uh, I've got uh, Tigon tubing and we'll see if they fit snug enough without clamps or if I'm gonna have to put clamps. And then I'm gonna need a uh, plug at the back. So I'm gonna have to come up with some kind of a plug for back there. So let me get started on that.